They say that when a John Mun would wake up in the morning every day, he'd spread thoughts of goodwill, first thing. Last thing before he went to bed at night, spread thoughts of goodwill. Goodwill creates the frame for our practice. It's a wish for happiness. And as the Buddha said, we, we're looking for happiness, we want something that's reliable. This, when we look at the various teachings he has, they're all in the context of this desire for happiness. What's wrong with things that are inconstant? Well, if you're trying to place your happiness on them, then the happiness is going to fall right through the cracks. Why should we be concerned about the problem of suffering? Because, because we want to be happy. Why should we be careful about our actions? Because we want to be happy. And we want happiness at last. Which means it also has to be happiness that doesn't harm anybody else. This is why this is not a selfish path or not just a hedonistic path. We realize that our actions do have consequences for ourselves and for other people. And those consequences can last for a long time, so you've got to be very careful how you look for your happiness, where you try to find it. This is why we look inside, because the truest happiness is the one that comes from within. You look around, you look at the world, the kind of happiness it provides goes up and down. The people go up and down, and societies go up and down. If your happiness depends on things that go up and down, it's going to go up and down too. The image they give in the canon is of a tree with a, sh with a shadow. If the tree gets cut down, the shadow disappears as well. In other words, the tree can change, which means the shadow can change. If you could say, I, I want a shadow that lasts forever, and well, you have to find a shadow of something that doesn't change. If you're looking for happiness, you have to find it based on something that doesn't change. That's why you have to look inside. And so the world outside, you do what you can for it, but you realize that ultimate happiness is not going to be found there. And we're never going to realize an ideal society out there, because everybody is free to bring their own attitudes into this equation. But the fact that you're not looking for happiness out there doesn't mean that you trash the world. After all, you have to treat it well. You have to learn generosity. You have to learn virtue. So there's nothing selfish about this pursuit for happiness. In fact, it's a responsible pursuit. We're taking responsibility for the one thing that really can be responsible for, i.e. our own actions. So keep this in mind. As the world disappoints, well, that's part of what the world does. You want to look inside for something that doesn't disappoint. And as for the world, it doesn't mean you give up on it. Even arahants, after they've attained awakening, they do, the, do what they can to help the world before they go. And so you look and see where your areas of generosity are helpful to your practice and helpful to others. And you focus on that. You make sure that your own behavior doesn't harm anybody. That's what virtue is all about. And then you do your best to develop the qualities within the mind that can take you deeper and deeper inside until you find that happiness that doesn't change. Once you found that, then the world is a lot less of a disappointment. It simply is the way it is because you're not trying to feed on it anymore. You give it what gifts you can, and when the time goes to part, the parting is neat. It's clean. So keep this as a framework for your practice all the time, that you want a happiness that's blameless, a happiness that's reliable. And keep focusing inside as your main point of interest, your main priority. Because that's where this desire for happiness will finally reach fulfillment. And it's the only place it can.